It is 25 past four. You're watching GB News. You may be listening on DAB Radio. Do hope you are. Let's tell you about a charity. It's called Open Doors. It supports persecuted Christians around the world. And it yesterday published a report on the places, the places where Christians face the most severe oppression. The 2022 World Watch List listed 50 countries where Christians face the most danger. And the three worst places, Afghanistan, North Korea, and Somalia. The report also found that getting on for 6,000 Christians were, in effect, martyred for their faith last year. In addition to this, a 2019 report ordered by our foreign, by then Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt found that Christians are the most persecuted religious group in the world. So why do we not talk more about this in the West? Joined by the former honorary chaplain to the Queen, that is Dr Gavin Ashenden. Dr Ashenden, thanks for your time. Um, why do we not talk about this more? Well, it's a very good question. Um, certainly the church is talking about it uh, because it's it's very aware that uh, there's a, the, 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 re the truth is completely different from the narrative that you have in the secular press. I think a lot of people um, think we're still living in the 15th century when Christianity was in charge in Europe uh, and have been reluctant to bring themselves up to date. But the fact is that of all the philosophies and all the religions in the world, Christianity is by far the most uh, the most persecuted. And um it I, I think I suppose perhaps one of the reasons for it is that the two the two philosophies that take most exception to Christianity are communism and Islam. And communism communism and Islam are, are both uh, prepared to use force to 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 bring in their worldview. Uh, and Christians are not allowed to use force. We're we're taught to turn the other cheek. It isn't always practiced, but nonetheless that's the aspiration. So what you've got is three three particular worldviews, two of which use force and one of which won't. And so perhaps it's not surprising that the one that won't use force um, is, is the one that's most subject to, to persecution. Is this a failure to think, Doctor, a, a failure of journalism? I've written before about the case of Asia Bibi, so a, a Pakistani Christian who, um, who faced uh, deep hostility and death threats and all the rest of it, uh, and, and a court system in Pakistan that... Uh, wasn't particularly fair, I think that's probably fair to say. Uh, but she's exceptional. Uh, there are so many cases that go by the board. And actually, if you look at the numbers here, there's a sliding scale. I'm talking about 5,000 people killed. But the figure is 360 million people, according to this survey, who face some kind of persecution. Asia is a very good example, uh, and our country refused to let her in. Interestingly enough, when, when the Syrian refugees came, we welcomed Syrian Muslims um, but I think less than two percent of the Syrian Christians were welcome here. There's a there's a deep there's a surprising deep prejudice against Christianity. I sometimes think it may have something to do with the fact that uh, we don't like the idea of people telling us what morals we should have. And if you can, Christianity is a bit like um, a conscience that has driven the affairs of Europe. Actually, driven them with some some success and some. Uh, so some success in the sense that we've looked after the elderly, the weak, we've educated people, we've put them in hospices, Christians invented universities and hospitals and so on. But in the last hundred years or so, there's been a sense in the West that we don't want anyone to tell us how to behave. And I think there's a feeling that it was Christianity that used to, to act as a conscience. And there's some sense, I think, in the secular press, some sense of quiet um, satisfaction, saying, well, we've had enough of you, uh, not understanding or, or really not understanding at all that both Islam and communism are both really quite heavy handed in terms of imposing their own belief systems. Uh, I mean, the gay, the gay community get thrown off buildings and executed in some parts of Islam. And, uh, and I remember when I was smuggling Bibles into the Soviet Union, uh, I was interrogated by the KGB and threatened with 20 years in prison just for bringing Bibles in, which was legal. Uh, so I think I think there's a I think that the, the truth isn't being told in the media, uh, but for some really quite complex reasons. If we knew what the reasons were, we could unravel them and challenge them. But thank you very much for taking the trouble to well, not at, at all. Least, and I hope uh, we can talk about it again, Doctor. Give, give, given give a, a platform fantastic... to open doors. Well, you've given us a fantastic overview, and it's hopefully something we'll re revisit many times in the future. Sad to say, but thanks very much indeed for your, that overview there, Dr. Gavin Ashenden. Let's turn to uh, uh, Calvin Robinson. GB News presenter, but perhaps more fittingly right now, uh, training to be uh, a priest in time. Uh, is that, can we, that's fair to say, Calvin, isn't it? I mean, you are ready, you, at some point you'll take holy orders, we presume? 
Yes, yes, I'm in seminary right now as we speak. Uh, God willing, I'll be ordained in June, uh, Peter Tide. So let's see what happens. But, I mean, I, I imagine, and I know, I know a couple of priests who told me that in the wake of things like the sex abuse scandal, uh, they've gone from a position in society where they're held with, in some reverence. Uh, one's told me about how you can walk down a street in Dublin and be spat at now. There has been this dramatic change. That's not what we're talking about here, is it? We're not talking about hostility. We're talking about uh, fatalities. We're talking about people being killed for their faith. Absolutely. Uh, we're not just talking about people being killed. We're talking about communities being destroyed. Churches are being uh, torn down. In fact, there's been a 500% increase in the number of churches being attacked around the world. And the, the, kind of the persecution is taking another level. It's going online now. So countries like China and India are using facial recognition and artificial intelligence to track down, to identify and discriminate against Christians. We're seeing this, and thank you to Father Ashenden for pointing out, in mostly Islamic and communist countries. And this is because we're so afraid to point out that not all cultures are equal, not all values are equal, not all moral values are the same. And we are ashamed of our Christian heritage, our Christian past in this country, to, the, to our own detriment. And, and we talk about, you know, all of these countries, we're seeing a map on the screen right now, all these countries around the world are persecuting Christians today. But it's happening at home. You know, we had a positive story uh, last week of a, a Catholic nurse, Mary Anoa, who was bullied out of her job. She'd worked for the NHS yeah. for 18 years. She was bullied out, but she won, thank goodness, in a tribunal. Um, for, she wore a cross on her necklace, and she got bullied out of her job for wearing a cross, where other people in the workplace, you know, Hindus could wear bracelets, Muslims could wear hijabs. But if you're a Christian, you're an easy target, and that's in Calvin, this Calvin, country. Calvin, can we just unpack? We haven't got long, but I just want to unpack that a little bit. I just wonder whether in this country, the reason we don't talk about this very much is because Christianity by some people, and I'm thinking on the on the wokeward end of the spectrum, see Christianity as a sort of instrument of, a one-time instrument of colonial oppression. Yeah, absolutely they do. And it's like everything in our history at the moment. We are, we're only allowed to look at the negative impact of it. We're not allowed to look at the positive. Uh, you know, Christianity founded, mo the church founded most of the schools, the state schools in this country, and as Father Ashington pointed out, hospitals and charities too. But we are obsessed with woke ideologies at the moment. Even the church itself, you know, just today, the Archbishop of York uh, promoted racial discrimination. He said that every uh, House of Bishops meeting must have at least 10 black or ethnic minority people in there. In it. They're going to co-opt them onto the boards. This is positive discrimination or affirmative action. I don't believe there is such thing as a positive discrimination. Discrimination is discrimination. But this is how woke we've become. Even the church itself is not bothered about persecution. It's focusing on superficial diversity and ticking the right identity crisis boxes. And putting slides inside cathedrals. That's a debate for another time. Calvin Robinson, thanks very much indeed, as ever.